Janma Dyasya Divaya Itaratas Charte Suavigya Swarat. Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikabaye Muyantiat Surayaha Tejo Vari Medam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Dam Nasrina Sadani Rastapuha Kam Sakyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of us. O oh, all pervading personality, Godhead. For my respectful base, it is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all cause of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Paramo Nimatsananam Satam Vedyam Vasava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Muna Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Purer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avurudya Tetra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion from the welfare of all. Up my bodily. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Shinvata Svakata Krishna Punya Shravanaki Hedyantak Stohiya Bhadrani. Oh, I'm sorry, you forgot. Nigama Kalpataror Alitam Falam Sukumukad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Vibhata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahoraska Bhuvibhava Kaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire to of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Like 
Kata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vedyantak Stohi Bhadrani Vidonati Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, or Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu abhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati tamas loke in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service of the Lord, I'm sorry, uh, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya siyante chasya karmani drista evat manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, chapter 6, uh, chapter 15, verse number 51. Did we do that yesterday? No. Yashadayaitad Bhagavat Priyanam. Pando Sutanam iti sam prayanam. Srinot yalam swasyayanam pavitram. Nadva oro bhaktim upaiti siddhim. Translation, the subject of the departure of the sons of Pandu for the ultimate goal of life back to Godhead is fully auspicious and is perfectly pure. Therefore, anyone who hears this narration with devotional faith certainly gains the devotional service of the Lord, the highest perfection of life. Reported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srimad Bhagavatam is a narration about the personality of Godhead and the devotees of the Lord like the Pandavas. The narration of the personality of Godhead and his devotees is absolute in itself. 
and thus to hear it with a devotional attitude is to associate with the Lord and constant companions of the Lord. By the process of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, one can attain the highest perfection of life, namely going back home, back to Godhead, without failure. Thus end the Bhaktivinata purports of the first canto, 15th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely. Sīla Prabhupāda Patita Pavāna Kījē. So the, what we've just experienced, the entire 15th chapter is about the Pandavas, how they prepared to attain the ultimate goal of life, which is to go back to Godhead, where we belong. We don't belong in this world. We are like fish out of water in this world. We can't really breathe properly. We can't really think properly. We can't really act properly. Everything is skewed. Everything is backwards. Uh, the truth is, is considered falsity, and falsity is considered, considered truth. So it's very difficult for devotees to live in this age of Kali, but there's always some saving grace. In, in every tragedy, there's always a silver lining. What is that? Uh, that is that uh, in this Kali Yuga, one can attain perfection simply by chanting Hare Krishna and following the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. Simply by doing that, you can go back to Godhead. So this is called dispensation because it's so difficult. God gives us a very easy method to overcome all the difficulties in Kali Yuga. dosa rajan astihi ekamahat guna one can easily attain liberation in the age of Kali simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra sincerely. In fact, even saying the holy name once, one can be freed of a mountain of sins by the mercy of the Lord. So, uh, the narration of the personality of Godhead and his devotees is absolute in itself. Thus, to hear it with a devotional attitude is to associate with the Lord and constant companions of the Lord. So this associating with Krishna through sound vibration, this is the special uh, gift of Krishna uh, for Kali Yuga. Uh, therefore, no one can say, oh, I don't have a chance. Uh, Everything is against me. Um, this is the uh, the uh, the age of Kali is so negative. Uh, I have no hope. No, the age of Kali may be so negative, but Krishna has given great hope. He's made it actually very easy. Maybe he uh, he said maybe he said Gunamai. Mama Maya Durat, yeah, it's, it's impossible to overcome the material nature because it's Krishna's material nature. It's his gunamayi, his uh, uh, energy. But, one who surrenders unto him can easily overcome it. So, we have to understand this and accept the mercy of Krishna as he's given to everyone today. Okay, so in the, the whole thing is chanting the holy name with sincerity and purity. That's the point. And that is what uh, we're trying to practice here in, in the temples of Krishna consciousness, this sincere chanting. <clears throat> so, Prabhupada gives the secret of spiritual success. Canto 1, chapter 5, verse number 33. He says, An expert physician treats his patient with a therapeutic diet. For example, milk preparations sometimes cause disorder of the bowels, but the very same milk converted into curd and mixed with some other remedial ingredients cures such disorders. Similarly, the threefold miseries a material existence cannot be mitigated simply by material activities. Such activities have to be spiritual. 
just as by fire iron is made red hot, and thereby the action of fire, and thereby the action of fire begins. Similarly, the material conception of a thing is at once changed as soon as it is put into the service of the Lord. This is the secret of spiritual success. This is the secret of spiritual success. We should not try to lord it over the material nature, nor should we reject material things. The best way to make the best use of a bad bargain is to use everything in relation with the supreme spiritual being. Everything is an emanation from the spiritual supreme spirit. And by his inconceivable power, he can convert spirit into matter and matter into spirit. So what are the scientists trying to do? They're trying to convert energy into matter. And they build this gigantic uh, uh, atomic accelerator on the border between France and Switzerland. They've spent billions of dollars in, in stretches for miles. And they're trying to accelerate energy and convert it into matter. Well, this is what Krishna has done already on a gigantic, unbelievable scale. And they're trying to do it on a minuscule, infinitely small scale. And it's costing them billions and billions of dollars. It's taken many, many years. And they have hundreds and thousands of scientists working on it. But yet, they say, everything started by accident. <laughs> For them to reproduce a tiny, tiny, infinitesimal portion of, of energy transformed into matter. They've gone through all this trouble. Right? And here we see this, there's an infinite demonstration of it in the universe. Yet they say that all, all happened by accident, but this didn't happen, didn't happen by accident. The atomic accelerator did not happen by accident. So you see how irrational, ridiculous, childish, foolish, Stupid, these scientists are, right? The other thing is, you have what's called the Nobel Prize. It's given to scientists who uh, make some very noteworthy, uh, uh, let's say, uh, discoveries. Do they give the Nobel Prize to things that happen randomly without anyone uh, behind it? No, that would be crazy. They say, "Wait, what do you mean? You don't, you don't give the uh, the Nobel Prize, which is like you know a million dollars, to nobody because something random happened and uh, we think it's wonderful." The, there has to be a person, and that person has to do the work, right? And it takes years for them to do these uh, things in order to get the Nobel Prize. So again, irrational, stupid illusory, uh, dumb, uh, to say that the whole creation happened by accident, but yet to give the Nobel Prize a person, a person has to do something. So <laughs> we see how absolutely uh, dumb people become when they're atheists and irrational, they're not, they claim that they're rational and religionists are irrational, but actually it's the opposite. They're irrational. And someone who has faith in Krishna, those people are actually rational. They understand that you can't have such a creation that's perfectly working by, uh, by accident. It, it just doesn't make sense. When everything else in the human society happens with intelligence and it's nothing uh, accidental. Otherwise, they don't get the Nobel Prize. Okay, so also this chanting is very important. It's of, of the utmost importance in the age of Kali. And Prabhupada talks about this. He talks about what's called, uh, uh, it's called uh, basically sincere chanting. Also explained in the fifth chapter. I'm trying to find where it is. My book here. It's a very important purport. And 
this emotive chanting, chanting with feeling, 1826, sorry, 1826. And it says, being materially advanced means taking birth in an aristocratic family and possessing great wealth and education and attractive personal beauty. All materialistic men are mad after possessing all these material opulences. And this is known as the advancement of material civilization. But the result is that by possessing all these material assets, one becomes artificially puffed up, intoxicated by such temporary possessions. Consequently, such materially puffed up persons are incapable of uttering the holy name of the Lord by addressing him feelingly. O Govinda, O Krishna, it is said in the Shastras that by once uttering the holy name of the Lord, the sinner gets rid of a quantity of sins that he is unable to commit. Such is the power of uttering the holy name of the Lord. There is not the least exaggeration in this statement. Actually, the Lord's holy name has such powerful potency, but there is a quality to such utterances also. It depends on the quality of feeling. A helpless man can feelingly utter the holy name of the Lord, whereas a man who utters the same holy name in great material satisfaction cannot be so sincere. A materially puffed up person may utter the holy name of the Lord occasionally, but he is incapable of uttering the name in quality. Therefore, the four principles of material advancement, namely high parentage, good wealth, high education, and attractive beauty are, so to speak, disqualifications for progress on the path of spiritual advancement. So that's the point. Actually, disqualifications, they're not qualifications for chanting purely. Uh, so it says here, a helpless man feelingly utters Krishna's name. Helpless person. When you feel as if there's nothing in this world that can help me except God, then they start chanting sincerely. So uh, there's a story uh, in France of uh, Kazimodo. Kazimodo was a hunchback, ugly guy. Very ugly. And everybody hated him because he was so ugly. He looked horrible. And he used to hide in the attic of the Notre Dame Cathedral. I don't know if any of you have been to France. This Notre Dame Cathedral is absolutely gorgeous. It was built in the Middle Ages. It's just an incredible building, and it's a church. And he used to hide in the, hide in the bell tower that nobody went up to. And one day, there was a very beautiful young French girl who had made some mistake, and they were going to hang her right in front of the Notre Dame church. And it was a public hanging. This is five, six hundred years ago. And somehow or other, Tazimodo looked down and saw this, and he thought, this is really unjust. And people were afraid of him because he was so ugly. He looked like a, a big gorilla. So when he saw this girl was going to be hanged, he comes down, scares the heck out of everybody, grabs the girl, and takes her up into the uh, bell tower. <laughs> now, the rest of the story is a love story where she's a very beautiful girl, and he's a very ugly guy, and she falls in love with him. And then it ends up very sadly. Uh, it's a sad ending. So uh, here we see it's such an ugly uh, obno uh, a physically obnoxious person has a beautiful soul. And he has a sense of justice and purity. And he did not try in any way take advantage of the girl. She fell in love with him. Right? So this, uh, this is a very interesting story. Of course, it's a mundane story, but it's very interesting. And that's why it says that a helpless man or woman feelingly utters Krishna's name. We should think about this purport, this first canto, chapter 8, verse 26, because we're chanting Hare Krishna every day, but actually, are we actually chanting feelingly with emotion? Do we actually feel helpless in this world and utter the name of the Lord? 
or do we feel puffed up because we have a nice body, wealth, we have education, we have, uh, we have important friends and so forth. We should think about this because a materially puffed up person may utter the holy name of the Lord occasionally, but he is incapable of uttering the name in quality. Therefore, the four principles of material advancement, namely high parentage, good wealth, high education, and attractive beauty are, so to speak, disqualifications for progress on the path of spiritual advancement. Srila Prabhupada Ki Are there any questions? Well, it depends, but but wait, Krish, uh, Arjuna surrenders to Krishna when all these things are incapable of saving him. Say, if, if a person is very confident that these things are uh, not only distinguishing for him, but are going to save him from all problems in life, then they get puffed up. Arjuna became convinced that none of these things were going to save him. You know, let's let's hear what he says. He says to Krishna, the second chapter. He says, "O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counterattack with arrows in battle? Men like Bisma and Drona, who are worthy of my worship." It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we killed the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple, and a soul surrendered unto you, please instruct me. So he's, he's saying, nothing I have is going to solve this problem. I'm, I'm useless, and I'm confused, and I'm weak. So therefore, I'm, I'm surrendering unto you, and you tell me what's best for me. But a person is puffed up. They say, well, I have this education. I have my, my friends, some of them are big politicians and rich people and billionaires. And uh, I have such an illustrious family and, and this thing and that thing. I have so much wealth. You know, I'm not worried. No. Arjuna says, basically, I have nothing. I'm finished. I need your help, Krishna. Okay, any other questions? All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you.